squatting in the bushes, waiting for the time lapse. There's another dude just showed up over here too. He's squatting too. <laughs> Everybody's squatting to find shade. And in this moment, I feel very Vietnamese, right? I feel very, 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 very Vietnamese. Good morning, everybody. I'm Kyle, and this is day two in Quy Nhung, central Vietnam, along the beautiful coastline here. And what better way to start the morning than to enjoy some bún cá? When the taxi driver said bún cá, I was thinking about fish, but it's actually bún chả cá, and it's so famous here, so popular here, that people just forget the chả part of it. And if you didn't know, chả cá is a uh, rice, uh, fish, cake uh, type of a thing. I see some pork in there as well, pork sauce. Mm. Okay, it's very similar to bumbu, but definitely fishier. A little bit sweeter too. Let's try some of that, check that. Mm. Oh yeah. I'm not a big check out guy. I never eat it, but on occasion, especially in the coastal areas, I don't mind having a bowl of bunga. Okay, so when I walked in, there was something on the board that said su, and I didn't know what it meant. And when I brought it out, it kind of looks like a bánh cuốn, but uh, rest assured, it's actually jellyfish. I've never had jellyfish before, I don't think. I ordered it off on the side. You can get bún su as well if you want. Let's see what it tastes like, and hopefully I won't have an allergic reaction, which is what I'm afraid of. Well, it absolutely tastes like nothing. It's just a crunchy, elastic, rubbery thing. It's plasticky, rubbery, but it's also crunchy as well. So the bunga here is actually pretty good, but it's not a dish that I would rave about. I wouldn't eat this normally or routinely, even in Saigon. Um, I'm more of a bumbio type of bunga. I'm uh, more of a pho type of bunga. But nevertheless, it's, it's always good to try the local uh, cuisine, the delicacies here. Uh, if you're in Queen Young, you have to try the bunga, just because that's what it's famous for. Right? Okay, so the rest of the day, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Behind me here is the gravestone, though I'm not sure if it's the actual burial site of Hang Mak Tu, Vietnam's most celebrated colonial poet. Your mothers will likely know him. He has studied throughout Vietnam, even to this very day. He actually contracted leprosy in 1937 and ended up dying here in Quy Nhung in 1940. Arguably the most famous person in Quy Nhung. Okay, so to really appreciate Hang Mok though, you have to uh, dive into his poetry. Now, uh, please forgive me ahead of time. Please forgive me. I don't really know how to read Vietnamese that well. Uh, I never went to school in Vietnam or anything like that. I never had official Vietnamese school training besides Sunday school. But, you know, those types of things. It's like two hours per week and I was half asleep. and I didn't really care. I got up to the second grade, even though I don't think I passed the first grade. Uh, so, that I know, but anything else, yeah, so forgive me, I'm just gonna try it, okay? Here we go. Uh, remember, this is old school Vietnamese, so you might not be able to understand it, and I probably won't be able to subtitle either, so here we go. Sung chia, sung nong, sung lit su, tui diu nhận thấy chân môi em. I'm sure it's beautiful, and I'm sorry I butchered it. One of my biggest regrets in life is not really focusing during those Sunday school periods. I didn't care about Vietnamese. I didn't know I would live in Vietnam. And even in the past five years or so, I never really paid attention much to Vietnamese. I mean, my speaking and listening and vocabulary have definitely improved, right? But there isn't really a strong desire uh, on my part to learn the writing and the written part. And it's mostly because I'm just super busy, right? Um, but there was a time when I went to a, I was driving uh, my bike and I was like looking for some food, right? And I saw pho tho and I'm thinking, oh, it's a, you know, but actually it was, it, it was pho tho copy and I didn't, I didn't look at it. Oh, it's pho. Anyways, long story short, young people watching right now, please, I encourage you to read and write Vietnamese, not just listening and speaking. And if you can't listen and speak, well, now is the time to start, okay? learn how to read and write. It's not that hard. I, I probably could pick it up in two or three weeks, but it's, it's, it's all about the will and, and the time of the day, right? But anyways, all right, let's, uh, let's see what else is here. 
not gonna fit. Oh. Oh, game over. This ice cream tastes like ice cream. So this right here is the Queen's Beach. King Baudai's wife, the Queen, bathed here. That's why they named it after her. So I tried my best to capture the towers in myself. It's not gonna work, it's not gonna cut it. Uh, for those of you who don't know what these are, they are remnants of the past, of an ancient civilization that ruled the entire stretch of coastal central Vietnam, as far as Hue, all the way down to Mui Nea, possibly. These are the Cham people. Currently now, there's 160,000 plus descendants from these original people who came from Borneo and the residents here uh, lean more towards Hinduism while their Cambodian counterparts are more Muslim. Now you will see these remnants all over Vietnam from Hoi Ang's Misung ruins to the uh, Cham Towers near Cam Rang on your way to Nha Cheng, likely you will see them. For me, even though I have a degree in history and I taught history for a very long time, I'm not a big ancient history type of a guy, but it's still kind of cool to see what used to be a very powerful civilization. If there's something I miss or if you know more information about the Cham people, feel free to leave a comment down below. This information is just off the top of my head, so uh, I'm probably not that accurate when it comes to that. So feel free to leave me uh, some specifics down there as well, okay? And right here is Vietnam's longest bridge according to the driver. Uh, three kilometers long. Somebody please fact check this if it's uh, if it's actually accurate because because uh, I don't know if I mean it feels pretty short though but I don't know look there's Queen Young in the in the background over there I don't know if you guys can see that it's a little bit shaky but that is going to be the biggest Buddha in all of Vietnam right there Wow uh, the driver just opened the door and just like wave of heat just entered us. It's like 95 degrees outside by the way. Okay, so we stopped at this place and it no longer feels like Vietnam right now all of a sudden. It feels like Bali. I'm walking down towards a beach right here and from the main road, you wouldn't guess it, but this feels like a resort. This feels like a, a Balinese resort. I mean, just, just check this out real quick here. See up there, that's, that's like the restaurant area. This is some kind of like camping ground right here with tents. And then down here, look at this blue water. Wow, that beach back there is absolutely incredible. It reminds me of the pure blue waters of Gongdao. I can't wait to go back again. Actually, I might go back again soon. The thing is, my ears, my ears are burning. Oh. These shots are fairly simple to do. Leave the camera down, press record, run or walk away from it, and then come back and get it like this. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so it's like double the walking. <laughs> Okay, let's sit down right here. Sit down right here. Sit down like that. I don't know if it's straight or not, but it's okay. It doesn't have to be straight. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then go back and then run across. Okay, I should be out of the shot. I don't know. Picked up the camera. Go up further. Keep going. Okay, set the camera down right here. Get a front shot. Okay, let's adjust it so it's a little bit higher. Slightly different angle. Just get the focus. Go back, go back, go 
Pick the camera back up. Maybe from this angle. No, I already got it from this angle. This angle maybe. Set it down like this. Capture my foot action. All right, I hope that gives you a better idea of how those shots are done. Usually it's me and a tripod and that's it. So not too far from the other uh, Bali looking place is this, a shack off the side of the road, one of uh, many, a makeshift restaurant, beautiful tarps from fishing lines and really uh, down to earth, homely, but young stuff here. I mean, we're sharing this meal with a bunch of flies. Oh, and don't forget the bees too. Many of you are going to be like, hmm, why would you still eat it if it's covered with flies? Well, we bought it anyway, so we might as well just, just eat it. Oh well. But most of the time it's not an issue. In Saigon, it's not really that big of an issue. In the countryside sometimes, yeah. But, really an issue in Saigon. Remember, there's always a good in everything, right? So you guys feed ducks and you feed pigeons, why not feed flies? Essentially they're the same thing, minus the feathers and, you know, everything else. But still, you're doing a good deed. Feed the flies. Also, I recommend using a banda as a fly swatter. Really, it's gotten so bad that I truly feel like I am the king of the flies, man. I am the fly man boy. And honestly, this is not very good, but I need food. I haven't really eaten anything besides the bunka all day. And it's almost five o'clock right now, so. Wow, look what they're building out here. It's like a whole little modern city out by the beach. The problem is sometimes in Vietnam, people burn their trash. all the way out here on this random uh, ledge to do a time lapse of that bay. You probably already saw it or you will see it. But I wanted to point something out. You guys see over in the distance over there, that is the new resort being built. I am surprised to see that because I thought Queen Young would never get touristy. But it is and it will. So it's time for you to come here. I mean just two or three years ago the hotel was 500,000 and now it went up to 800,000, right? So, just to give you an idea, this is an, oh, I need to find shade, but I'm scared to leave my camera alone because a strong gust of wind could just blow it over. Okay, I need to head back to it. And just hang out right here, try to find shade while, while I wait for this time lapse. Okay. It will get touristy, so now is the time to go to experience the real Vietnam here in Binh Dinh province. Uh, Queen Young, one of my favorite beach cities by far, hands down. Come check it out. It's worth a day or two if you're in the area. I'm fighting the mosquitoes, man. The, mos the flies earlier, now the mosquitoes out here. Ooh. Okay, uh, I don't think the sunset thing is going to work out tonight. It doesn't make sense to wait around two more hours or so. So we're just going to head back in town and uh, see if we can catch a sunset from the top of our hotel. And that's it. The night is here, my last night in Queen Young, perhaps my last night ever in Binh province. I love this place. I love the people. 
so nice. I love the sights. The water was so pure and blue today. Come here before the real Queen Young turns into a different Queen Young, a newer Queen Young. Follow me on social media to stay up to date with what I'm doing behind the camera. T-shirts will be available very soon within the next few days. We're going to do a soft launch on Facebook first, so be sure to like that. Uh, we're trying to figure out the uh, shipping and the processing fees, so sorry for the delay. Tomorrow I leave at 5 a.m., but I will always miss the city. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. KyleA.net, Facebook.com, slash KyleA.net. Oh, 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 airplane, airplane. Airplane in the night sky. We have to make a wish right now. Um, you know, talking to the taxi driver, I think the one thing in my life that I wish for right now is stability. Stability. If anybody knows how those trees got up there so high like that, please let me know. How are they growing like that?